right, so we're going to go over Zach George's video and react to it. Um, Zach George is, I don't know the whole backstory. He is training somebody's Kane Corso um, and he's keeping it at his house. So I guess you could say it's board and train and it's just a puppy. And a bunch of y'all just sent me the initial video wondering what my thoughts were on Zach George training a kind of corso puppy. So we're just going to watch this through. I only looked at one small portion of this and I actually did a, uh, a reel and a YouTube short on it. And I'm just going to give my reaction. And I know Zach George does not agree with my training methods. 100% he does not. He's positive only. And I don't agree with his positive only training methods either. Um, there's nothing wrong with him not agreeing with me, me not agreeing with him. I'm sure he's a very nice person. So I just kind of want to go through and like watch these videos and see how he's training this puppy. Kind of course the puppies are extremely easy to train. Uh, that's why I don't know why these people are doing board and train. I don't know the whole backstory here. So just so you guys know, I'm not trying to put anything out of context here. But Kanye Corso puppies are very easy to train. So the real test would be if he trains a Kanye Corso, how his continuous training with his methods were when this Kanye Corso becomes an adult. Because they change drastically through adolescence and they change drastically as they become an adult. Um, puppies, puppy Connie Corsos, extremely easy to train. The easiest puppy I've ever had to train in my life was both Bruce and Justice. So let's just check out some comments really quick here. So glad to have a training series to watch again. I've missed these. Shade, Shade is the uh, Connie Corso that um, he's training, the puppy. I don't know how old it is. Looks very young though. Um, be interesting to see him be shaped into a life companion. It's not going to be shaped into a life companion here because we're only seeing it through, I don't know how long, but just puppyhood. And I don't, like I said, I don't understand why these individuals are essentially bored in training a puppy. Um, you think you'd want to do that on your own because that's where that bond is built and that's where the whole beginning of this dog's life is structured. So you're already changing the puppy's life, right? You're pulling it away from the parents and now you're giving it a different life. And then in two, three, four, eight weeks, however long he has it, you're again giving it a different life. It's very stressful on the dog. It's very confusing on the dog. I know Zach is not enthusiastic about dog parks. Neither am I, uh, but I have one near me. Shannon does really well there. It is large, but not too large. And sometimes she corrects, she connects with many dogs and sometimes not, but we always come home pleased with ourselves. Um, so apparently Zach does not like dog parks and neither do I, because you don't know what you're getting. You don't know um, how people's dogs are trained. So let's just check this out right here. One, you've hit the jackpot with this series. Meet Shade. All right, Hunting I'm going Corso. to. So um, raw in his training, he's essentially a blank canvas. End up Over the next skipping weeks, along through some of this video. Of teaching him to be the epitome of Look how cute well he is. Dogs. We're going to tackle those common puppy challenges, housebreaking. Not so. Yeah, I like how he's getting. Um, teaching him how to focus and pay attention. Shade used to the harness like right there. And chewing. I've done and that with uh, with Mastering justice. Leash etiquette, socialization, and so much more. Can we be candid? for a second speaking of socialization i have a uh, socialization video that kara and i just did um how we socialize both bruce and justice check it out it's some great information in there for y'all real dog training is a roller coaster there are always lots of ups and downs you'll see each yep triumphant tons of ups and downs stumble and exactly how we navigate the entire process of raising and teaching a dog You're crate training crate training is a must a purest, most uh, unfiltered for form. all dogs even if you don't plan on creating them for life it is just such a must. Always crate train your dog, um, especially as puppyhood. They should be crated when you don't have eyes on them because they can get into too many things. They can destroy your house. And even worse, they could end up killing themselves by eating something they shouldn't. So when you have a puppy, especially this age, if you don't have eyes on them, they need to be in a crate or some type of barrier. And, and they need to be crated at night anyways. I'm not into um, sleeping with dogs. It sets a huge bad precedence the bell to be notified every time at least at this an age episode. click thumbs up welcome to your okay. ultimate let me skip here. Gonna grow. i am absolutely 
All right, we I, I really want to make sure that he has good leash manners and he's not gonna pull. And I just know that as he gets bigger, that strength is just gonna grow. I am yep, absolutely hoping to improve Shade's house training. I don't want him to be a problem jumper. I wanna make sure he comes when he's called. I just wanna make sure that he's a great companion. So she's looking for that perfect canine companion, essentially. It's important to pay attention to the emotional state of any dog we work with, particularly when we're first meeting them. We have to learn about that individual dog. As I approached, I noticed that Shade backed away. At first, Shade was nervous to approach me. I wanna be... And if you're working with a puppy, and you have like a puppy, if somebody, if they're scared of someone, don't overwhelm the puppy, you know, let them adjust, um, just sit there and chill, let the puppy kind of figure it out, keep your emotions normal. The puppy's scared right now, and I already see she's comforting the dog, that's a big no-no in my book. Um, when a dog's in a state of fear, even if it's a puppy, don't comfort them because it's reinforcing that fear. It's telling them, hey, you're scared, and I'm going to love you. Really sensitive to how he's perceiving me. Because I can come on kind of strong sometimes with dogs. It's important to be sensitive to dogs at this age in particular. He seems accepting though. He's, he's just smelling, you know. About what that dog's personality is. Does he have a treat in his hand? See, I'd have a treat in my hand right there. There he goes. He's, oh, look at the tail. Yeah. His little, yeah, he's he's a, going. The wiggly butts. Like we all know the wiggly butts. Toys or how curious they might be. Over the next few weeks, we're tackling multiple fronts with Shane. So Shane seems a little reserved right there. Socialize him. This is huge for young dogs. There's a lot to cover, but it's all going to be part of a holistic approach to his well-being. The bond and the trust, number one. Now, even though I do not agree with uh, how Zach is positive only, and by negative, by balance training, it doesn't mean you're hurting your dog. Um, it doesn't mean you beat your dog or you inflict physical pain on your dog. Um, you, I can tell he just really loves dogs, and you know I appreciate that. I appreciate that from him. Like I said, even though we don't align on things, I, I appreciate his love for dogs and what he feels he's doing is right um, in promoting that. Bree is just about to arrive with Shade. My plan is to have the dogs outside when Shade Hoping we got arrives. more of a background I think I'm just of gonna why, go straight into the in why she decided to let somebody else train her puppy introduction with them. You just never know how dog to dog Seems dynamics good. are going to go. Bree just called me to tell me he's very emotional and crying and barking a lot. And I can totally understand this. I mean, from his perspective, he's just been abducted. One of my main priorities <laughs> like here said, in the first 24 hours is going to be to make this dog feel comfortable and loved and accepted. Yep. It's shaping up to be a pretty active first 24 hours. I think by ex Zach is totally correct here. When you first get a puppy or adopt a dog, your main goal should be making them feel comfortable. Um, don't worry about training. Don't worry about leash training. The, you know, potty training, yes, is a must. But just get them adjusted to their new life, which is, again, why I don't agree with board and train, except for in certain situations. And those situations are usually aggression issues. Um, I don't understand why somebody's bored and training a puppy. I think I'll introduce them through the fence first, make sure there's no red flags from either one. Is the puppy gonna be really excited and wanting to play, or is Shade gonna be a little bit nervous? I'm guessing a little bit out. nervous, which is one of the reasons I wanna do one dog at a time. Are you nervous? Yes, very smart. He looks a little nervous right now. Yep, there's a little bit of pee as predicted. Right now we have him on okay. a collar, but we are gonna be fitting him for a harness. Let, and yep, you can perfect, see how let him meet. Get Letting dogs meet through a fence, if possible, like Zach is doing right here is perfect because the dogs can't go after the other dog, right? There's that barrier in between there. So it's just a much, it's the safest way to do it. If you, if you have a fence like this, it's the safest way to introduce dogs to each other. Being small for the puppy. Why don't you go ahead and pick up Veronica, if you don't mind? Because I want to focus mainly on inertia. I'm also looking at Shade here. He's a little standoffish more than anything, which is normal for puppies. Let's see how- Shade was displaying um, signs of being scared right there. Like, oh, I'll rewind and show you guys here. Let me see here. Watch his tail. If you don't mind. Because I want to put tail his tail in the second. Is I'm tucked. also looking at Shade here. He's a little standoffish more than anything. He's scared. This is normal for puppies. Let's see how a nurse is trying to be I wouldn't even call that standoffish. Yeah. I just say that he's more not confident and scared. I don't say that standoffish with Shade. You're doing a great job. He's kind of. See how his tail's tucked? Here. 
So he wants to get close, but he wants a little reassurance. He's backing up so into Zach because he's, he's a little scared. That's inertia. Inertia, this is shade. I mean, just a few extra minutes. It can't hurt anything. There he goes. Say hi. His tail's go up. His tail just went down. So I'm gonna drop the leash. Let them. Not necessarily scared right there. He's right just now. kind of just now trying to figure things out. Now. Let them explore naturally. It's a secure environment. And so I'm just looking for a polite greeting. In general, we want to make sure that the dogs are playing at similar levels. Good girl, inertia. Her movements are so quick it could be startling to the puppy. Which could be good and bad because it could now it's getting the puppy used to. The kind of course and puppy used to this type of quick squirrely movement um so it's just desensitizing him if anything i i feel like not doing any harm all up in his business and it's just doing such a good job of testing him and then backing off for a minute and kind of sniffing around so we've got a moose right there there it goes he didn't even react to that i think we'll go to the side yard in the yeah. zoo moose are While scary a family deeply wow this big. it's crucial to approach it with caution look at that moose, thing often deemed alaska's most okay. dangerous animal can be particularly keep going here to minimize Nice shake off. A shake off like this in dogs is a signal that serves as a form of emotional regulation. When you uh, see Bruce and Justice get super excited, especially when you get home, they just shake and they shake and they'll shake off just like that. Um, it's, you know, like you said, it's part of their emotional state. Your distance, all fine. And so I'm here to advocate for both dogs, should anything look weird. But so far, this all looks pretty healthy initially. Yeah. First impressions are Veronica's nervous, but very curious and very interested. She's quite respectful of him. He's respectful of her. He's not okay, coming so on Okay, so Veronica Looks like is that dog's name. Behavior in my book. I need so to try to remember this stuff. Built. On one hand, I could be annoyed by this since I'm trying to produce a series, but I actually... And this is the clip you all sent me that I did a reaction to. So um, this is the only part of the video I've seen. I kind of appreciate it as a dog trainer because construction sounds and noises right off the bat you can see he's taking notice and he's never seen anything like that he's trembling yeah he is trembling a little nervous as we witness shade's reaction to this construction equipment it's normal to feel concerned by the trembling and we'll give him comfort I'm looking give for my opinion here. gradual relaxation and curiosity never this do this really aligns with the principles of desensitization essentially aiming to reduce fear through measured and thoughtful exposure so what he's doing here, the dog's definitely in a fear state. There's no question about that whatsoever. Um, he is comforting the dog. He's coddling the dog. He's loving the dog. He's touching the dog. This is reinforcing that fear. He's telling the dog, if you act like this, I'm going to give you a reward. I use love and praise as a reward. I would... Justice really didn't go through any fear periods. It was weird. Most dogs do, and Kane Corsos are so sensitive. Um, most of them go through multiple. I think Bruce went through at least two, possibly three. And the best way to approach this is to act normal and do not touch the dog, don't coddle the dog, don't pet the dog, don't praise the dog. Literally act normal like nothing has changed. Keep your energy calm. Let the dog figure out the situation. When the dog sees their leader, when looking up at the leader, sensing that that energy from you is calm, they're gonna feel calm and they're gonna understand over time that there's nothing to be scared of. Bruce was scared of motorcycles um, for a bit. That's what we did with him. I'd have Bruce around motorcycles from a distance. Obviously, if something's right up on your dog and it's terrified, turn, walk away with your dog, create a lot of distance. That way the dog's a little bit more comfortable and is not overwhelmed and it can actually process what's going on. And then all of a sudden, Bruce would be scared of traffic on our road because our road's 55. So if you're walking down the road, cars sound different than in town where it's 30. Bruce would get scared, essentially. I just keep walking, looking straight ahead, completely ignore Bruce. After a few weeks, totally normal. And he is so non-reactive, it is crazy. Confidence is, is going to be huge in Shade's development because obviously he's in a new place, so you can't really judge the puppy too hard yet. Um, but 
he's showing a lot of signs of fear um, and just he's very unsure of things. So Shade definitely needs a lot of confidence building. And in this crucial imprint stage in their brain, it's just so important that things are done properly and being ready to adjust if needed. We also want to be careful of sensitization with him, which is basically where if we expose him to something that's causing him too much stress, it can get worse. Sensitization occurs when a dog's stress or fear response yep. intensifies upon repeated exposure to a specific stimulus. In this case, it would be the construction noise. But given that- See, he's right now he's just chilling that distance, and he's figuring he it out. Go farther away. If he was really scared, he might go over there. And Zach's not touching the dog there. The dog was literally observing and the dog was still shaking and that's absolutely fine. It's, it's learning life. And the construction equipment's at enough of a distance where it's not gonna overwhelm the puppy because if the puppy's overwhelmed, it's not gonna be able to process things and it's gonna be like While fight or flight, right? it is to expose dogs to various environments for socialization, there is a fine line that we have to tread. Too much stress, especially without the opportunity for positive associations, can lead to an escalated emotional state each time the dog encounters that same noise in the future. So it's not really just a matter of getting your dog used to it. Without careful management, the emotional toll can increase, complicating future training and well-being. Ultimately, the idea is to make our training environment as conducive as possible for positive learning experiences. Yeah, I'm yep. kind of staying. Jumping is one of my biggest concerns with dogs like this. I'm gonna back up here so he doesn't get reinforced for it. I wanna see how he reacts when I play frisbee with inertia. When I see even a glimmer. Now, when uh, the puppy would have jumped on me right there, just immediately I would have like dodged it. So it would have just like came back down. I wouldn't allow it. And then he also let the puppy kind of stay on him for a few seconds without any correction of any sort. So the puppy is just thinking, oh, I'm allowed to do this. And I'm sure, you know, this is just a one-time thing. You have to remember, when you're on camera, you're trying to film, it's not like you're fully thinking of everything, and it's not like you're doing everything perfect every single second. I just I just want to point that out. I'm not, like, hating on Zach or anything like that. See, now his tail's up. Play ritual, happy. Love that he's curious. Like fetch or tug of war. Much more comfortable with the uh, inertia. Not just serotonin. The goal now is just to give him an introduction to the main his crate area set up. Where he'll be spending his time with us. I hope my puppy proofing. See right there? I would have corrected that. Now is to let him freely explore this area, which is relatively small. See, I, I don't agree with that. You shouldn't be allowing your puppy to freely explore. Um, you should always have eyes on them, which he does. I don't think that's what he means by that. But when the puppy jumped up on the coffee table, he allowed that to happen. And now the puppy's gonna be confused. Puppies learn very quick. Next time he does it and he corrects him or tries to not have him do that, the puppy's like, why? I would just, you just let me do it a f a f like five minutes ago. So always remember, you're always training your dog, guys, whether you realize it or not. You're either training them to do something you want them to do or inadvertently training them to do something you do not want them to do. And especially at this age, they are taking everything in it and absorbing it. We have a ton of amazing online training courses. Just check out the link in the description. You have lifetime access to these courses and you do save 10% using code Jason. There's a puppy training course, which uses the same philosophies of how I train Bruce and Justice. There's a canine boot camp, which will give you that perfect canine obedience using again, the same philosophies of how I train Bruce and Justice about play for me. The sooner you get that going, the better. Structured play offers a gold mine of benefits. It's not just a motivator, but it's- a <laughs> I like that, he's curious, he's going, really you know, tap into those little obstacles. mini obstacle course for himself. See, they don't just appear, they flood the system, enhancing emotional well-being and their cognitive function, which as a dog trainer is really in our best interest. I'm looking for any potential signs of resource guarding the toys on now his- the uh, puppy Good is I think we just got very chill and mellow right now. Yeah. Also, so y'all know, Connie Corsos are extremely possessive because they're a guardian breed. So they need to protect what's theirs, their house, their toys. And because they're possessive doesn't mean they should be resource guarding. If you take something from them growling at you or, or if you take their food growling at you, no. That's not the possessive I'm talking about. Um, the possessive I'm talking about is Justice, for example, has a toy that he loves. He carries that thing everywhere he always wants eyes on it if he's if he leaves it outside he sits at the door because he he needs to know that toy is okay 
our yard is the dog's yard. It's their property. My neighbor's yard, because they can see it, is their yard. They're very possessive over it. Anybody other than my neighbors go up and down the driveway, they bark and alert me. So that's why I really wish we could see Zach train this dog through its entire life to see how it really turns out. Because again, a Connie Corsa puppy is easy breezy lemon squeezy. They're so easy to train. Um, and if you do things properly, you're gonna end up with an amazing canine companion. If you do things improperly, you're going to have a dog full of fear, dogs that are scared, bite. You're gonna have an aggressive dog possibly. Um, it's, it's not so much puppyhood, it's that like, yes, you're, in, you're putting that in, imprint in their head through puppyhood, but once adolescent hits, you gotta know what you're doing for sure, especially through adulthood, because these dogs change and they are not for everyone. Veronica's reaction is gonna be a little bit more complex. There's a little bit of concern over here with Veronica. She's not like, hey, let's play, let's play in the way that inertia is. She's a little more reserved. When we got justice, my main concern wasn't training justice. It was training Bruce, and not even training Bruce, letting Bruce know his life isn't changing and building that relationship and bond. And if you go back to my puppy vlogs when I was daily vlogging when we got justice, you'll see how I created that amazing relationship because Bruce was never like aggressive to him, but he wanted nothing to do with justice. And I formed through structured play sessions um, this crazy bond with them all. Understandably, he's much bigger than she is. He's 30 pounds. She's only 13 pounds, more than double her size. In this first indoor introduction, you'll notice Veronica is on the couch. So her I'd eyes say are fixed on shape. at 30 Let's pounds, she's emotional state. 10 to 12 weeks old. You can see her stress levels are likely a little bit elevated. This is all really new to her. This form of observational learning is so invaluable. Now, it's a low risk way for her to engage her environment. Now, very different because there is this new strange dog that's entered it. You might be tempted to rush this process and put your dog directly on the ground, but let's evaluate why that is not ideal here. That could spike those stress hormones like cortisol, maybe adrenaline, which could hinder her ability to think freely okay. and make we reasoned don't... decisions. Very often, observation is by far the best first step. Every dog has a unique personality and Veronica's apprehension True. is a reminder that entry Even within the same breed. attentiveness to each dog's comfort level. I don't think her behavior is a roadblock or anything. It's an opportunity to explore and address what might be causing her unease. This is yep. a big part of managing a multi-dog household, recognizing each dog's needs and emotions and responding with empathy and skill. And right now- That couldn't be said better. Um, every dog, with the, even within the same breed, is going to be different. They require different things. They require different attention, um, how you talk to them even. In terms of socialization with him, I do have some concern. I got a video from his mom, Caitlin. He currently lives with okay. another dog, but there was some concerning behavior that I saw with Shade and the other older dog that I want to make sure we're on top of. So basically, he got a little firm with an older dog and even mounted the dog. Yep. If healthy corrections by our dogs are needed. I'm hoping to see that. It really is evident that- I really from more used people. Bruce to train justice because I, Bruce is the dog that you want when you're training another dog, especially a puppy. He won't overcorrect a dog and hurt them, but he will give the dog corrections. Even to this day, he'll give justice corrections. Um, and it, so dog on dog corrections are amazing and it really helps them learn what to do and what not to do. And or poop in this house because he hasn't identified it as his living area. It's important to let dogs Same out every point. 30 minutes, every hour or so especially during yes, the first puppies. day puppies i'd rather take him out we're getting up every or care is getting up every couple hours yeah. um so when we got around. justice to let him out to the bathroom at night here so far he hasn't had to go i've been out here a few minutes and this is how it goes you're not entitled to uh, success every time you come outside here the important thing is that we're giving him opportunities because his potty accidents even as a puppy are going to be no joke and you can imagine if his house training doesn't get under control what that's going to be like so that's that for episode one of Zach George's Totally Untrained Ultimate Puppy Survival Guide with Akane Corso. Make sure you guys are subscribed. I will keep doing these um, since you know we're all about Akane Corsos here and it's such a quirky breed. It's a much different breed than the average dog. They're very sensitive. I'm interested to see what he does. We ultimately won't know how this dog turns out unless he had it th for, the, for three years essentially because they, it takes them three plus years to fully mature. 
But it'll be interesting to see what he does with this as a puppy, and I can compare it to what I did with Bruce and Justice and share it with y'all. All right, make sure you're subscribed. Everything I'm associated with is linked in the description box below. A ton of merch down there, all my training courses, um, my ebook. Until next time, we will see you later. Peace.